Three months ago, I was in Aberdeenshire and I had a fantastic wildlife experience where I took images and film of pine martins, quite surprisingly actually, but all on trail cameras. And on that occasion, I didn't manage to have enough time to try and get images and film on the big camera while I was actually there. Anyway, this week, I'm back up in Aberdeenshire for another week. The difference being this time, all I have to do is photography. So first day, back up here, only one thing to do really, and that's try and get those images and film. So let's see how we do. Right, I've, oh God, look at the state of me. I've actually, I've made it to the, the site. Um, you wouldn't believe what a difference three months makes as regards the state of the area. The actual path down, which was really wide open last time, uh, three months ago, is completely overgrown, which in a way is a good thing because it shows that there's not a lot of people activity down in this area. It tend, uh, there must be a couple of die-hard dog walkers, and that's probably about it, who come down at this time of year. But I had to come off the path and only probably a couple of hundred metres from the river to this spot. I'm not kidding, it was, uh, it was up here. And with um, fallen down trees, massive hollows into ditches. Um, so yeah, almost killed myself getting across here, but I've now got a bit of a route, so um, I should be okay. I don't really want to go into the full setup today. Um, if you haven't seen it, take a look at um, my previous video that I did three months ago. But one or two of the things that I did uh, when I laugh, left last time, I don't know whether you can see behind me, I started to build up a bit of a, an area where I could put the hide. Um, so what I like to try and do is put a bit of a false hide up. So just put some tree, old tree trunks and stuff and lent them up. And then when I come to do the video, so the plan will be is I'll put the trail cameras up today. When I start getting things on the trail cameras, then I'll come and set the hide up inside here and hopefully because and what I'm going to do today is add some more stuff to it as well while I'm here and then hopefully that means that you know it won't be too much disturbance for the pine martins or red squirrels or whatever comes and they won't really react to the hide being there because there's been something there that's the the idea anyway but what I also did as well as building this last time if you remember um, I'll take you over and show you so just here was where I had the feed and um, up that nice little log at the back. What I thought was because my hide is only, it's probably about eight meters away to here. Um, you've got this nasty tree in the way which you can't do anything about uh, as well. So what I did is I moved my feed to, I don't know whether you can see over there where that banking is, there's a a tree going across well I've got a feeder attached to the back of there that gives me a little bit more distance when they're coming in so hopefully from there to there is not too far what I'm probably going to do is put a little bit of food on the old area as well because I can shoot it from here uh, but the majority is going to be across that log there um, because hopefully they'll come to there they'll be a little bit more comfortable with me being a little bit further away I'm probably about 10 meters there and I just feel like that's a a better distance. Since I came last time, the only thing that happened, this tree's fallen down and it fell right across where I'm gonna be hopefully shooting. So I've snapped some of the branches off, the bigger branches. I'm gonna lean them up against there to uh, add to my sort of false hide, get the feeders up. And uh, yeah, I'll show you what it looks like then. Right, made a few changes. So hopefully you can see it's a little bit more of a structure here. I mean, it's not gonna fall anything. Um, all open at the front, but it just, there's just something there. So hopefully that's enough to convince whatever's coming here that it's not a threat. And when I put the hide up in there, they won't really react to it. That's, that's the hope anyway. But I'll show you what I've done with the food. So, as I say, I set this up last time and left it and filled it up with food. So as you can see, we've got this nice log here. And I've just filled this up with I might put some more on here actually. I've got some at the back, I've got some over here, and I've got some up on this end of the log here. There. 
Um, but let's show you the trail camera setup. This is a little bit different to last time, or it will be when it's finally done. So I've got this trail camera here. This is pointing directly at where I'm hoping the pine martins are gonna come to to feed. This is the one I had up last time, and it's the one that got the absolutely stunning footage. Um, as I say, I was so, so pleased. It's the Seymour one. I'll put the link in the description actually to that, that um, trail camera. It's slightly different setup this time because I've got another trail camera up and this is one I actually reviewed. And the reason I've got this one up as well, which is here, again, point a little bit further away, but pointing in the general direction of where I'm hoping the Pine Martins are gonna come to. As you notice, this one's got a, an aerial on it and it is a 4G one. So the difference between the two is that one's got a local Wi-Fi network, which means if I'm like 10 meters away, I can check the settings, I can look what photos it's taken, but I have to be like 10 meters away. With this one, when it's triggered, it should trigger 25 miles away back in when I'm sat in the house in Aberdeen and tell me what's coming and when. Now, that's a massive, um, it's, a, it's a massive upgrade on what, what I was doing last time because the only way I could come and tell if anything had been was to actually come to the site. And what that led to me is making the decision that I was going to leave it so many days before I came, when in effect, the pine martins were coming from like day two. So I missed out on some potential days I could have come out down with the hide and, and took some images. So hopefully with this, it'll alert me as soon as something's coming down. And then I know, not only do I know when, that something's coming down, I also know what time, which means I can then program to come and get the hide up and hopefully, fingers crossed, get them coming down when I'm here during the day. Anyway, that's the setup here. And uh, yeah, hopefully, a couple of days time, um, I'll be getting some alerts on here and we'll get some, some pine martin action. A squirrel as well. In fact, as I say, I keep saying if you watch that video, we had red squirrel, badger, pine martin, and uh, Labrador, yeah. How you doing? Well, it's day three and I'm in the hide. Really excited to be here today. Um, the reason I'm here, and I'll explain why and the, why I'm here at this time, um, is really due to the trail camera footage. I started to get a lot of hits on the trail camera. And what I, that enabled me to do was have a look what time the hits were coming in, what the hits were, uh, because obviously with that other trail camera I can see what's coming uh, and what time and what it is uh, and that enabled me to just sort of do a sort of detailed look at the times um, stuff was coming so I'd got red squirrel coming during the day but I've got pine martin coming mainly at night um, but also a couple of uh, times during the sort of late afternoon early evening so what I've, I've done today, basically, I've, I've set up sort of from lunchtime because looking at that trail camera footage, I think my best chance of getting pine martins during the day is going to be that sort of early evening. Um, and hopefully that's what I want to do. I've bought flashing stuff up, but I'm not really wanting to use it. Uh, that would be a last resort, really. I'm not sure whether I would anyway. Um, sometimes I just, I don't like so much like the look of flash photography um, with regard to sort of wildlife and um, yeah if I if I can avoid it at all I will do and I think it you know it can be a little bit disruptive so I don't really want to use it so uh, I'm umming and ahhing about that at the minute. So my plan is at the minute um, and what I've had coming in as I say I've had red scrub but I've also had pine martins. I've also had pine martin kits at least four, possibly five, um, that have been coming in. But looking at the trail camera footage, they tend to be early hours of the morning for a couple of hours and then they disappear. Um, so I'm pretty sure, you know, I'd be really, really lucky to get any pictures of those during the day, but we'll, we'll just sit here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sort of wait until it almost is dark. Um, as I say, I think I'm almost 90% sure I'm not gonna use flash. Um, so I'm going to have sort of six, seven hours in here now and wait and find out 
um, you know, if anything comes, and uh, hopefully it will, but uh, yeah, now's just a waiting game. I'm all set up, I've got the camera set up on the um, feed station that I've set up, so it's just really waiting, and, and I've got a little sort of peaky hole here that I keep looking out of just to uh, check whether there's any action at the feed station and uh, yeah it's just constantly trying to be aware and listen and use all your senses really but we'll wait and see what happens. Right so I'm all set up ready to go. Just a couple of things I wanted to actually talk to you about before we get started because I'm going to have to go into complete and utter silence mode um, fairly shortly um, and then just just be as quiet as possible. There's a couple of issues. When I was doing starting this project, I started looking at loads of pine martin images and I was seeing loads that I thought that was similar to the last lot I saw. And uh, I think it's a problem we have in photography. It's probably actually a problem we have in society these days. And uh, I think Queen probably said it best when they said, I want it all, I want it all, and I want it now. There is a, a culture of us all wanting everything now. and. Um, you know, I'm probably as bad as anybody else. But with photography, I now started to notice a lot of images of pine martins that all look fairly similar, similar backgrounds, similar perches that they were on, and I'm thinking, hmm. And of course, I know what's going on, but it struck me that the problem with it is, is if you're a new wildlife photographer, it can be quite soul-destroying if you see other supposedly, well, new photographers, new wildlife photographers, who are always bang on hitting the mark and getting these stunning images straight away, no problem, don't seem to have any issues at all doing it. And um, it can be, you know, it can be demoralising really. Um, I would just urge you to um, have a little bit of doubt in your mind. And why I say that is that I wouldn't say that some photographers or photographs are deceptive but I'm trying to find a kinder word for it but I just I don't seem to be able to so yeah it's they can be quite deceptive so you'll see an image posted on say Instagram and it will say uh, from my recent long weekend up in Scotland a group of pine martin shots. We'll take, use pine martins for an example, but it could be anything. And there'll be a portfolio, I say 10 images, absolutely stunning, really clear, lovely, smooth backgrounds, wonderful perches, contrasting colours, absolutely perfect, look wonderful. And what I like to do is read the comments because you'll get like the first 10 comments will be something like, wow, awesome, I wish I could have been there to take these images, um, super talented, I don't know how you do it, great images, fantastic images, what a magnificent animal. And then you'll get so far down the comments, you'll probably get to 10th or 11th comment, and then somebody will say, uh, was that taken in a paid for hide? And then the photographer will either ignore it or have to answer it honestly and say, well, yeah, it was the such and such paid hide at such and such. And then all of a sudden the mystique's not really there as much. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a case of leaving information out rather than not... Um, and whether that's deliberate or not, let's say it's not deliberate. Um, but the thing is, I think you should be completely on, open and honest about your images. Because if you're a new photographer, that can be absolutely soul-destroying. You know, if you see somebody knocking out these images and you think, how the hell are they doing that? They've only been doing it as long as me. And I, you know, I can go out day after day and not see anything and not photograph anything. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, one thing you will find on this channel, I tell you how the images are taken. Um, often you'll see me crawling around taking them. If I can crawl around with the camera, I will, uh, or in a hide like this. Um, and the other thing as well is that um, if I'm in a hide, that I've paid to go into a hide, I'll tell you, and the reason for that is twofold. One is I want to be open and honest about it, and the other reason is, if it's a great place and you can get great images there, I want to promote the place where I am and say, look, come to this place, it's blooming great, you know. You can have a really nice day out taking images. Because I've got nothing against paid for hides. Um, I just think as photographers, we need to be open and honest about when we're in one of these paid hides. 
Um, so anyway, that's something for you to think about. As I say, it's more for beginner photographers, really. I think a lot of us who've been doing this a long time are fully aware when we've seen something that's not quite uh, being portrayed as it really is, uh, should we say. The second thing I wanted to say to you is about projects, and I know I've mentioned this before, but again, it's linked. If you are a photographer who's never taken on a project, if you've got a an image, a wildlife image in your mind that you've always wanted to take and think you'll never be able to do it, start it as a project. It doesn't have to be anything really complicated. It can, it can be something as simple as, I'm always taking pictures of garden birds out of my conservatory on the feeder. I'd really love to get them like I see them on the front of BBC Wildlife magazine where they're on a branch and there's a clear background. And I've done videos on this before as well. But you know, it's, it's easy enough to do to take that next step. And the thing with it is, is if you research and do the whole thing yourself, however small the project is, if it's something like garden birds, where it's just a case of setting up perches, making sure your background's far enough away from where your bird's gonna land, making sure your bird's landed in the right direction by placing the food in the right place, getting the right weather conditions. If you've done all that yourself, and just worked it all out and worked it yourself and finally you get that image you've always been after it will mean so much more to you than you know um, as I say what we've just been talking about if you go to a, an organized place where that, all that's been done for you the satisfaction level must be pretty poor and, I, and again I'll relate it to this you know I could go to a paid hide and pay and get images of pine martins any day of the week and um, you know, I could put them on a video and show it to you. For me, you know, the, these are the images of a, a lifetime in a way for me because I have done everything myself. I've had to use this. I've had to um, make changes. I've had to change things when they've gone wrong. I've had to um, improve on things that I've done right but haven't gone well enough. I've had to try and work around things because I'm so far away. You know, I've had to try and do all these things to to get to this point. And if it comes off, you know, it is like, wow, I'm so, so happy that, you know, I managed to get it done. And it, an image is definitely, if I get an image, it's definitely going on my wall, you know, because it's, it's not, that image will remind me of all that body of work that's gone behind it, that toil, that sweat everything that's gone into getting to that point that image is the final cherry on top of the cake but it represents everything you know everything that I've done for this god knows how many months not even when I've not been here but the thinking I've done to try and think how can I do that when I get up there how can I make it work so it's compacted into that small amount of time I've got so any project that you do, it just has that body of effort behind it that makes you think and makes you know that that Im image means so much more than something that you've cracked off in a day because you've been paid to go in a hide and do it. Anyway, that's my spiel for the day. Um, I hope you can take something from that. If you take anything from the, this video, I hope, you know, that's it. It's that, you know, as a wildlife photographer, the satisfaction you will get from doing something from A all the way to B to get that finished result is just, it's why I do it.
Martin's uh, he's headed off now so what, what I'm going to do I'm going to give it another hour I think I've got about another hour of proper daylight the problem with it in here is it's because I'm in woodland and I'm in a valley um, it's going to get dark really quickly as soon as the sun drops down behind the hills behind me so um, I think I've probably got about another hour so I'm going to remain quiet for another hour and just see if anything else comes by but I tell you what I am so I'm so blown away I feel like I could sit here all week now just just waiting for him to come back but I have right I've decided to end the video on my way back to get into the car um, I made the decision really just to pack up cut my well I won't say cut my losses you know I've got exactly what I wanted to get I'm so bloody happy with the stuff that I've got and um, you know the way that I've planned this for three months really from when I first uh, did that first video again link up there um, so yeah it's been absolutely fantastic and I couldn't have asked for more to be honest I'm so so chuffed with what I've got and really it's just really for me it was time to just pack up and leave them to do their own thing as you can see um, because it's getting towards eight o'clock the midges are now in full swing and I'm down by the river so I'm going to clear off I'm going to leave you with some more footage of uh, Pine Martin kits and uh, yeah I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time for another one Bye. You two, come on, have you cleaned the camera? Look, there's a cobweb over it. Yeah, it's not getting in your best light at all. Yeah, that's better.
Thank you.